What's going on, YouTube? This is NecroStevo, and it's time for the playoffs. Round one in the Indigo League of Legends. In the first round of the playoffs, the uh, Venice Venus are actually going up against the San Francisco Swampert. And that, of course, is our long, long, long storied rival, Connor. Now, I know that Trainer Connor was really, really anticipating this rematch, and I uh, actually got tied up at work before um, the battle. Didn't get back until a lot later than I anticipated, and I missed out on really doing the preparation that I wanted to do. But I uh, ended up still having the battle, and um, we wanted to do them all on showdown, which was a godsend here because I didn't get a chance to breed anything. But uh, on the Indigo League of Legends channel, Isaiah and Mac and probably uh, at least one or two other people are doing live commentaries of the battles. So I'll be sure to link that in the description. And of course for this battle, I did anticipate for him to predict me to bring Charizard Y because that worked out really well against him the first time. So I didn't bring it. Why put myself in that uh, situation, I guess, where I'm being predictable. So instead we have a nice, very, very specially bulky Mega Aggron. With Stealth Rocks and Roar, um, my prerogative in this battle, I didn't think he was going to bring Beedrill. He didn't bring it the first time, and it doesn't really help him out too much against my team. So uh, I wanted to get up Toxic Spikes, and then in addition to that I wanted to get up Stealth Rocks, and then phase him around as much as possible. I did. I really was very close to bringing Scarf Latios and then having Life Orb Embor, but I was afraid of uh, Latios being locked in and giving something like Pangoro too many opportunities to hit my team. So I ended up going Scarf Embor and Life Orb Latios uh, with a very offensive Draco Plate Dragalgy just so I could switch up moves after laying Toxic Spikes. Uh, and then of course Crawdon is actually a Swords Dance variant with just enough speed to outspeed something like Slurpuff that's not invested in speed. Um, and then the last member of the team, of course, is Lipard, which I specifically put Copycat on it just in case uh, he was running Scarfeliolisk. Then I could still outspeed him, even though he was Scarfed. Um, that way, also, if he switched out, I could switch over to using Knockoff or maybe even um, switch over to U-Turn and still have that nice uh, priority copycat, copycat going on. Now, just looking in the team preview here, I did expect him to start off with Ferrothorn just because he wants to get up entry hazards against my team. I could have Defog against Latios, I mean on Latios, but he doesn't know that necessarily. So uh, I really, really needed Toxic Spikes against this team. So I actually ended up starting off with Dragalgy, and I wanted to go for Hidden Power Fire first in order to just make him want to switch out. With that, he actually ends up going on to Magmordar as I get up my Toxic Spikes. I wasn't sure why he went out to Magmordar. Magmordar can get Earthquake or even Psychic. Neither of those are going to be enough to KO Dragalgy. So I just stay in and drop a Draco as he goes out into Bangoro, probably expecting me to switch out into maybe, I'm not sure, Latios most likely to take the Fire type or the Ground type attack or anything like that. I was very worried about Zygarde setting up. So I actually end up staying in and going for another Draco Meteor as he goes for Coil. And I was very afraid of him going for Outrage, so I just stayed in and let him take out Dragalgy. Uh, if he had gone for Outrage and taken out my Latios, I would have had a little bit of trouble taking him out. But with only plus one attack, he's not going to be able to take out Latios with the uh, extreme speed. Now the way he brings in Heliolus, I know it's Scarf, but I did not want to risk him going for a Hyper Voice or a neutral move. Uh, or even Focus Blast predicting Aggron, so I just leave Latios in to be KO'd. Because I know if he locks himself in the Dark Pulse, I could just bring in Embor. And there's nothing on his team that can take a round of Poison damage and two Flare Blitzes. So at this point, Embor definitely picks up a free KO as he brings in Slurpuff. And then Slurpuff just dies to two uh, Flare Blitzes, which I was happy to see that I was worried that he would have the Solak Berry build that he had before. But he didn't have that, it was more defensive. Um... I, again, didn't want to risk the 50-50 here. I know Connor is very, very likely to predict me to switch around. And I knew if he just went for Thunderbolt, I could bring in Aggron, set up my Stealth Rocks, and then start phasing him around some. And so that's what we're going to do. I did go for a Heavy Slam in case he wanted to stay in and try to damage me. I'm very specially bulky, so there's no way he'd be able to one-hit KO me without a crit. Even with the crit, I think it would be kind of a roll. Uh, unfortunately, I roar him out into Heliolisk. I would have liked to see Magmortar there. Because I needed to get as much damage on Mad Mortar as possible. 
because I didn't know what set he had. Uh, and I was anticipating him to stay in right there, expecting me to go for Roar again, so I just went for Avalanche. But he does switch out. And at this level of HP, I do want to go ahead and get up those rocks. And we start exchanging entry hazards. I don't want him to get up all three layers of spikes, but I can't really stop him because I can't take him out. I had Fire Punch on Agron before the battle started, and then I switched it to Avalanche because I was worried uh, about Zygarde. And Fire Punch doesn't allow me to do anything, nor does Heavy Slim, so if he did set up with Zygarde, I could at least have Avalanche in the back. So, right here though, he goes out into he uh, Heliolisk, and I get to copycat that Thunderbolt. I know even if he brings in for Rawthorn, I can just go for Thunderbolt and then knock off to finish it off. And this is perfect because uh, now I can copycat my own knockoff. And with the copycat, I outspeed everything that he has. Uh, this is really, really important because his last Pokemon is Magmortar. And Magmortar had Mach Punch. So if I had not copycatted my own um, move, then I would have been in a losing position because Mach Punch had a pretty good chance of taking out Crawdon after the entry hazards. So uh, that's assuming he is uh, Life Orb too. But that is what we call an incredibly close battle. Um, I did keep Crawdon in the back the whole time because I was fearing Heliolus to have Dry Skin, which of course would have rendered Aqua Jet completely useless. He actually had Solar Power expecting me to have Charizard Y. So it was basically my biggest advantage in this battle that I didn't bring Charizard Y because he just really prepared for that. Whereas um, I had a couple of checks for basically everything that he could run. And that, it was just a matter of kind of phasing his team around to get damage on everything and then clean up with something. So that was a fantastic match. Thank you very much, Trainer Connor, for the battle. I do hope you guys enjoyed the battle and look forward to round two. I think we're going up against Johnny Diesel in round two, so we'll get a chance at some revenge there from our earlier loss in the season. But anyways, though, hope you guys have a great day. I'll talk to you later. Bye.